All right, Jared, you gave it your best effort. No more comic book films. So Morbius tells the story of a dying doctor who merges his DNA with vampire bats and becomes a living vampire. What is up everybody? Welcome to the review of Morbius, the movie that whether or not it was good or not, I'm so fucking glad I don't have to watch the trailer anymore. This is a movie that has been delayed possibly more than any other film in history. I need to be fact checked on that, but it's been over two years since we saw the first trailer for this film. It's been delayed like crazy with the pandemic. It's been pushed back seven or eight different times. And here recently over the past week where my anticipation for this movie was never that high has basically been demolished. There was reports about all of the Spider-Man stuff in the trailers being false advertising. I did a video on that. There was also this whole event where the director of the film was doing an online Q&A and was just flat out spoiling huge details of the movie and post credit scenes and everything. It just almost felt like Sony could not wait to just get this thing out, bury it, and move on. And even with all of that being said, I still walked into this with an open mind, hoping that maybe with having lowered expectations, I will watch this thing and actually be surprised with how much of a good time that I had with it. Like the last Sony movie that I watched, Uncharted. I walked in thinking this is probably going to really piss me off. So I better just walk in really expecting it to be rough. And then I actually had a good time with it. Not the experience I had with Morbius. So starting off with the positives for Morbius, I will say that Matt Smith gives it his all to have fun on screen, to have a fun character. He ends up becoming the villain in this movie and he has a very interesting relationship at least initially with Morbius, with Jared Leto's character, and their dynamic with each other really is the main plot point of the movie. That's kind of where everything is kind of hinged on. And so he does his best to have a fun time. I think that there was probably a lot left on the cutting room floor. I think that he's a good actor that has a good charisma to him. So if there was any actor individually in this movie that I could say he tried his best, it was him. Special effects wise, I think that that was pretty good. Nothing outstanding here. You know, there was a lot of kind of blurs and fast motion and slow motion. A lot of those tricks to kind of hide the quality of your CGI and of your action sequences. But the, the CG with the face of the vampire, whenever Morbius has like full transformations, I thought was actually pretty good. A lot of the color effects that they put on his motion while he's flying and zipping around had a cool little I like almost like a neon kind of aesthetic to it. So CGI action wise, there's much worse out there. And I will say the first act of this movie actually sets up what could have been a pretty entertaining time at the movies. I never expected this to be grand cinema. I never expected this to be a fantastic comic book movie. I figured at best, this might be like a good little three star movie that I can have fun with once in a while. And the first act of the film certainly has that merit to it. I was like, hey, I like these characters. I like this setup. Things are moving at a nice clip. A little bit of horror vibe here and there. Certainly some Sony comic book vibes mashed together. This might turn out okay. And then the other two acts of the film came. And let me tell you, this is not the worst comic book film that I've seen in a long time. There are certainly bigger disasters out there. Movies like Fant Four Stick, I think would be easily an example of something that's worse than this. But, this possibly is the most generic comic book film that I've seen in like the past 10 years. It is remarkable how unremarkable this movie is. From everything, from the characters themselves, to the character development, to the actual story, to the comic book stuff, to the vampire stuff, it is all tropes, cliches, wash, rinse, repeat storylines that we've seen in other films, even within the Sony Spider-Man universe, and it's just generic. It's nothing here that we have not seen done wildly better and done a dozen times before this movie finally decided to see the light of the fucking day. Now, before I get into the specific hard negatives on this film, I will say the one mixed experience that I had with this flick is the actual ending of the movie. And I'm not going to get specific. All I will tell you is that it ends so suddenly to the point where you almost want to turn around and be like, is that really it? Like, that was not an ending. You set up things that haven't been explained. There's that that didn't feel like a conclusion or a climax of this film whatsoever. And that has its own frustrations right there to it. 
But the mixed side of it is that I was already sick of watching this film, so the faster I can get the fuck out of that theater and move on with my life, the better. Now, as far as negatives, I don't necessarily think that Jared Leto, his acting ability, is bad in this film, but Morbius is not a very interesting character. And I don't know if that's because the movie was hacked down to where a lot of his development was just left on the cutting room floor. I don't know if it is partially because of Jared Leto. I mean, his performance is fine whenever he's this diseased guy, this doctor that's looking for a cure. It all fits there. But after he actually gets the powers and turns into the living vampire and becomes the hero slash villain or anti-hero, whatever the fuck they're trying to do with this character, nothing changes about his personality. There's no like excitement about these powers, even though there's a dark edge to it and there's certainly things about it that's a curse to him, there's just nothing personality wise that comes out of this guy. He's got a new lease on life, he's no longer dying, he's got superhuman powers, he can fucking fly, and there's no point in this film where like, there's actually part of his character that advances or changes or does anything different than that quiet, frail, little diseased guy that you see in the first 15 minutes. To the point where there's even attempts at humor here, and there's attempts at little quips that just completely are deadpan because everything that Jared Leto says is just tired in this film. It's just like, hey, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and take all this equipment here, leave that, leave that machinery over there, and leave the bag of hot Cheetos. Clearly that's meant as a joke. Like, ha, huh, he talked about hot Cheetos. But the way that he delivers it is just like, it's almost like the 35th take and he's just like, fuck, I need to go take a nap. Can I, can I break after this one? It doesn't help that character development is pretty much non-existent in this movie all the way around. I mean, you have your main character here who I've already said doesn't really advance much in the film beyond the visuals. You have the villain in this film that goes from friend to mortal enemy in about 35 seconds and it just just the fucking rising action from regular guy to evil as fuck is just out of nowhere. The motivation that they give you to kind of chew on for why he might go that way is very weak. And it doesn't even really make complete sense why this character has the motivations that he does in the back half of the film. It just seems completely anti-productive to anything that he actually is set up to think and to feel in the first half of the film. And even if you take this at face value for what we actually get, in this cut of the film, it's basically just a redo of the exact same character dynamic and the exact same character strain that we get between Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Dane DeHaan's Green Goblin in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This guy's got a disease, you have the cure, I want it, he doesn't want you to have it because there's other effects, and then they get pissed off at each other. And that's basically all we get. And there is absolutely zero narrative flow to this film. You hear people say this a lot when they're talking about a movie that just doesn't really feel coherent or feels like it's been edited to death, that it was just a collection of scenes. It doesn't feel like it's actually flowing from one plot point to the next. It doesn't feel like it's transitioning from one sequence to the next, one scene to the next. And that is exactly how this movie is from the beginning all the way to the end. I mean, it makes sense as far as like chronological order of events, but everything is just like a brick in the face. Every time you hard cut to a new scene and you're with a new set of characters, sometimes with narration over the top of it to try to like quicken the development of this plot really quick, it just doesn't feel like there's any flow to it. It's just a bunch of shit that's mashed together to make an hour and 40 minute runtime. And it even goes to a point to where the side characters of the film, like Tyrese and his partner who are like the investigators trying to figure out who is sucking all these bodies dry, they feel like they have no place in this movie whatsoever because you know nothing about them, you learn nothing about them, there's no actual like journey or any kind of a actual narrative motivation for these characters to be on the hunt for this guy. You could have hired absolute no-name actors to just stand there with a badge, the movie would have been exactly the same. Speaking for a moment on all of these Spider-Man universe tie-ins, like the video that I did talking about all the rumors that all of the stuff we've seen in the trailers was removed from the film, wasn't exactly that drastic, but there was certainly a reduction of it in this film. And there's a reduction to the point of there's some things that you've seen in the trailers that are not in the film, but also the things that you do see in this movie are not exactly a part of the film the way that the trailer makes you think it is. It's actually like just momentary little pop-ups, or it's a different take, or like the post credit scenes, which that's the one thing I am going to get into. I will give you a spoiler warning before I talk about it, but some things were just relegated to just being like afterthoughts after the credits that have nothing of impact on the actual story of the film. And so it does bring up that 
debate again. Was this movie marketed incorrectly? Is it a bit of false advertising? It's a little bit more of a slippery slope to talk about it now that there is actual scenes in the film from the trailer. It wasn't as drastic as the reports were making it out to be, but I do think this movie was mismarketed because there was points where towards the end, you had Michael Keaton's character of Adrian Toomes narrating the back half of the trailers. The Spider-Man imagery was just all over the place. And that is like zero presence in this movie. And going along with that, I'm gonna put a spoiler warning up here. If you don't wanna know any details about the post credit scene, then just skip until you don't see this. I'm only gonna talk about it for a minute. The whole thing that they do with these post credit scenes, they're not like the weakest post credit scenes that I've ever seen, but they are the dumbest post credit scenes that I've ever seen because everything that it teases and sets up and suggests makes zero fucking sense to me. You literally have Michael Keaton's character dropped in like into this empty jail cell while the sky is ripped open. So presumably they're telling you that his character has now bounced from the Tom Holland universe to the Morbius universe, which apparently now is not the Tom Holland universe. That's some other Spider-Man's villain. And his first reaction is like, mm. Hope the food's better in this joint. And then they release him because they don't know who the fuck this guy is. There's a little news report. And then they give a couple more credits. They don't even make you wait for the rest of the credits, which, thank you. And then they give you another scene where he's already got his bird armor back. He goes and he meets with Dr. Morbius and he's like, hey, you know, I thought we should team up. And Dr. Morbius is like, uh, interesting. And then the movie just cuts out. So many things wrong with these two scenes. Number one, why the fuck would you take Adrian Toomes away from the Tom Holland universe because that's a Tom Holland villain. Second, why would he be happy about that? Because his entire motivation, his entire characterization in Spider-Man Homecoming is that he's doing this for his family and you just took him away from his family forever. That would be devastating, not something that he's quipping about. Three, how the fuck did he get his suit back, let alone that quick, if you're gonna tell me he went and built it or some shit. And then four, Morbius is not a villain in this film. Morbius is not somebody that's evil. He's not somebody that's doing all these nefarious acts. Even though he's technically a Spider-Man villain, he's made to be a hero in this movie. Why the fuck is he teaming up with a bad guy at the end of this? What is that supposed to tease for me? What is that supposed to suggest? So whatever the hell Sony's idea was with those two post credit scenes, hard pass. And my final negative, which really is just kind of an all encompassing negative so far with this Sony Spidey verse that they're trying to kind of sideways build while Tom Holland is still in the MCU. I don't understand the point of making all these villain origin stories if you're going to make them non-villainous. I mean, Venom can get away with it because Venom becomes an anti-hero and he's one of the more popular characters in the Marvel Universe, let alone the Spider-Man Universe. Morbius is not that, and you made him heroic throughout this entire film. Yes, he killed a couple of people, but you excused it away by saying, eh, they probably weren't really bad guys. And then he's heroic for the rest of the film. This is not a bad guy, this is not a villain. He's somebody that would certainly be looked at as a villain in New York as Spider-Man, but he's not a villain. And so how many of these villain origin stories are we gonna get that aren't fucking villains? What is the point of that? Spider-Man's just gonna be fighting a bunch of kind of cool dudes, and eventually they're all gonna hold hands and sing fucking Kumbaya by the end of the first film. Makes no sense to me. Make villains villains. So all in all, guys, I did not enjoy this film whatsoever. I honestly think it's easily the worst film that we've gotten out of the Spider-Man universe. All of you amazing Spider-Man 2 fans, you can rejoice. It is no longer my least favorite film in this franchise. Uh, this one is. This is a movie that it's not the worst film I've ever seen. It's not the worst comic book film I've ever seen, but I, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing for me. And I think that's the first film since they've started to let Marvel kind of help them build this universe that actually takes away from what they have built. So if you're a fan of Spider-Man villains and you were curious to see what the live action version of Morbius is, I hate to be a heartbreaker, but you're not going to be happy. So go ahead and save yourself 90 minutes, save yourself a couple of bucks and just skip it. So what do you guys think of Morbius? Are you a fan of this? Do you actually really enjoy what they were setting up in those post credit scenes and everything else? Do you want to see Jared Leto eventually tied into whatever universe this is going to end up being? Or do you feel like this pretty much put the nail in the coffin for his character and for Jared Leto doing any more comic book films? 
Let me know your thoughts down below, guys, and we will talk about it. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you are a fan. If you're a Spider-Man fan, back when Spider-Man No Way Home came out, I reviewed all of the films, the Tobey Maguire's, the Andrew Garfield's, and of course, I've done reviews on the MCU movies as they've come out. I did a couple of rankings, so there's a lot of Spider-Man content on this channel for you to check out. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.